yesterday. Well, Tally, thank you so much for the great introduction, and thank you to Beth and Meredith and Trini. Thank you, everybody, who's made this show come together in such a wonderful way. So I really appreciate the work you've done. So yes, I just give you a little bit more background on myself. I grew up in a really tiny town in North Missouri. The population is about 4,000, and we're the epicenter of that area. We've got the only grocery store in about a 30 mile radius, <laughs> so it's very small. And in fact, this summer, um, my parents were cleaning out the house, and we found some old letters from like when they were teenagers. And at that point, all you had to do to address them was just write the name and city. That's all, if you mail it inside Brookfield, because everybody knew everybody. But um, I decided, you know, I wanted to pursue art. And so when I came to graduate school, I knew I needed to kind of take myself into a different situation. So I moved to Denton, which for me was huge, because just someone I was speaking with, they're like, you realize that UNT is, um, you know, like huge compared to your hometown, you know, exponentially larger. And it kind of blew my mind. So it's at that point, you know, I didn't realize it at the time, but I started making this work about what I knew from where I grew up. And it was kind of a way to deal with homesickness that I kind of saw later. But I realized how different my setting was because I'd lost my sense of direction when I moved here because everything was very similar. There were like 20 McDonald's in the town <laughs> as opposed to the one that was like in the next town over, you know. So it's like I would drive not by... Um, street names, but by like drive until you see the pink house with the bathtub in the front yard and you take a left, you know. So I kind of was lost for quite some time and I realized um, with that bit of removal how interesting my hometown was. And so I started thinking about how these structures kind of um, portrayed the people that lived and worked there and how unique they were. So that's kind of where it started. Um, uh, this show specifically is interesting for me because I just recently moved back to Missouri after living in Texas for about seven years. And I realized after a few years of being back in Missouri, I started to focus more on residential structures. And so it's because when I drive home, you know, like when I was in Texas, I was thinking from a removed area and I was thinking more about the industry and the jobs that people had and how different they were than what I was experiencing in the city. Um, but now when I drive home from work, I'm going through neighborhoods and I'm looking at people's homes and I'm thinking them about the way they're decorated, like the Christmas lights, and even like looking through the, the windows and seeing their TVs and whatnot. I know it's kind of voyeuristic, but it's more of like a surrogate for that person, the way that it looks on the outside. So that's what I'm pursuing at the moment, all the while trying to get uh, not be arrested by taking these little <laughs> snapshots um, uh, that I can work from later. I'd always liked working from direct observation, but I uh, quickly found out when I started this series. I tried, but it's just it's too dark for me to see what I'm doing. Um, so I work from these really t poor snapshots, but I like them to be that way because it makes me be inventive with color and a lot of other things too. So that's a quick kind of introduction. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. It kind of looks like Hopper in a way, that same kind of effect, except there you don't see any light at all in the windows, and here you see ex excessive light in the windows. Did, did you think about him when you were doing this? Or? Yes. Um, some of my heroes growing up were the regionalist painters, so Thomas Hart Benton, Grant Wood, and of course Hopper. Um, but I feel like his work is a lot more melancholy than mine. I feel like I've got that Midwestern pride, so I'm I want these things to represent the Midwest, you know, and kind of show the uniqueness. And I think of them in a very positive way. But yes, I do see the connection for sure. What about cinema? They look, they look like a Spielberg night shot. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yes, no, you know, that slightly overexposed uh, highlight. You know? Yes, true. And I do that to a certain degree because I, I really like color, you know, and it's kind of a fun fact. I know they're all nocturnal scenes, but I don't use black out of a tube. And this is something that I always preach in my painting classes. I'm like, no one owns black in here. <laughs> you have to make optical black because it's just got much more depth, yes. Um, but they do have a sort of a cinematic quality, and I like how that lets the subject matter, which is super mundane, sort of transcend and be a little bit more significant. I think there's just a poetry in noticing. And with these being paintings, you know, the insignificant gains significance. So it makes you slow down and look at the things that probably you would drive by in two or three seconds and not even look back at. So do you work on one painting at a time, or do you have several going? I generally have several since I teach now. Um, I try and paint something every day, but I find that during the week when I'm kind of chained to my desk at school, 
I'll go home and do a lot of the prep stuff, like the underlayers of the gesso or building stuff. And then on the weekends, um, you know, I can focus on one, you know, for an extended amount of time. But I'll have several kind of in prep stages as I'm going through the week. So you've been working a lot, it looks like. I have. I really like painting. They're awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sure. Are you making a conscious effort to, I mean, you know, how much of the world dismisses small town Living yes. and you know we live you know we live in commerce and people are like oh, oh, yeah I mean, yeah it's like that. <laughs> um, and, and so the, what I you know what I love about these is that you are uh, displaying the beauty mm -hmm. of of these small towns yes and and you know is that one reason to do the night. Yes, absolutely. And I think, think that things become more interesting just visually at night. And it sort of transforms, too. You know, like during the day, it's not lit and it's kind of dingy looking. But at night, they take on a different kind of identity in a way. But yes, I think of my small town. I'm proud of it. Even when I go back now, I'm sure that anybody else driving through there would not think much. But for me, it's really important. And I knew growing up, a lot of the people I went through school with, their main priority was to get out and away. That was never really mine. I really loved it there. And so I'm still very happy to be painting about it. And it's funny, in this show, there are a lot of images, especially the small houses. I'm like, well, that's the baker's home. You know, so that's the way I think of it. I know that you probably can't relate to it that way, but, you know. <laughs> yes? Um, apart from the iconography, comp compositionally, there's a lot of tension between the light and the dark. Mm -hmm. and was that a challenge, starting with this series, trying to find that right balance? Not necessarily. For me, it's more about pigment, especially with some of the new things that I'm doing with the very artificial Christmas lights. It's trying to get that almost... Um, acidic glow, you know, that's very different than any kind of natural light that happens in the atmosphere or something. It's just, it's a fun challenge. Well, thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much. We're really excited to be here. Well, thank you guys for coming tonight.